now let us go to the next example. So, in the next example what is happening is that we want to we are still having uh, reciprocation circuits, but now we uh, now we want to um, have a regenerative configuration. What is regenerative configuration? See, previously you will you will you will recall that all in all your cases when you are trying to move the cylinder one end. Suppose you want to move extend the rod. So, you push in fluid into the cap end and the fluid comes out at the rod end. So, you connect basically you connect the cap end to the pump and you connect the rod end to the tank. Now, here what we are saying is that we want to recirculate some of the fluid which is coming out of the rod end into the cap end. So, how that is possible? So, so, that is exactly what is being shown here. So, you see again identify components first. So, you have uh, this is say A pump, this is B relief valve, this is C directional valve and this is D A cylinder. Now, see that we have drawn the cylinder rod a bit thick just to ensure that the rod area is not negligible to the cylinder piston area. This is the piston area capital A and this is the rod area small a suppose. So, what is happening is that now the two side areas are different right. Also look at this particular uh, directional valve which is two position and it is kind of you know it is it is it is detented in the sense that. So, when you what happens what happens when both the solenoids are off. So, when the both the solenoids are off then it stays in the position corresponding to the last operation of the solenoid. So, if last the solenoid A was on then it will even if you take A off it will it is going to remain at the left position. So, that is due to a mechanical you know arrangement. So, that is that is detention. Okay. So, now what is happening here is look at look at this that uh, suppose the pump flow here is V right. So, uh, so what is happening is that this part what is the flow? Uh, this part the flow is uh, if this is V see the ratio of the flow into this suppose it moves by a distance x then the volume field is A into x and the volume which is expelled is A minus A into x. So, if this is V 1 and if this is V 2 this coming out then V 1 uh, V 2 by V 1 is equal to A minus A by A is equal to 1 minus A by A is equal to 1 minus 1 by k 1 minus 1 by k is equal to k minus 1 by k. So, this is v 2 by v 1 and v 1 by v 2 is equal to k by k minus 1. Okay. So, now what is now? Uh, so, again V is equal to V 1 minus V 2 is equal to uh, V 2 
yes is equal to v1 uh, v, v is equal to v1 minus v2 so it is v1 minus v1 equal to k by k minus 1 into v2 so it is k by k minus 1 minus 1 into v2 that is equal to what that is equal to 1 by k minus 1 into v2 k minus k plus 1 so 1 by k minus 1 into v2 and so v2 is equal to k minus 1 let us let us write it a different place so we get two equations we get v2 is equal to k minus 1 into v and therefore, v 1 is equal to k into v. These are the two, let me encircle them in a different color, these are the final expressions. So, these are the flows, you understand? Uh, similarly, uh, so you see that, so if typical case is this is the case during extension stroke. So, actually you see that though the flow rate is k into v, typically k is greater than 1, but the actually the fluid drawn is from the pump is small v, right. Now, what happens in the retraction stroke? In the retraction stroke, so, in the extension stroke, it is going to go like this, like this, it enters like this and then again part goes this and part goes. This is the, this is the flow patterns in the extension stroke. What happens in the retraction stroke? In the retraction stroke, in the retraction stroke now you are in this position so now this simply this is the path directly this is the path there is there is no there is no fluid addition or anything so now what is happening is that if this is v then this is v and obviously because it directly goes into this and what is going to be this this is going to be uh, naturally this will be uh, so a into rather a minus a minus a into v Suppose it moves distance x. So, if this is v, suppose the area is half, then this side it will be k into v. The distance moved in unit time is actually v by a minus a. If v volume is is flowing this is the distance traversed so that into a will be the volume which will be expelled so it is going to be a by a minus a into v which is equal to a by a uh, a minus a by a is equal to 1 minus 1 by k is equal to k minus 1 by k. So, a by a minus a is going to be k by k minus 1, yeah. So, it is going to be k by k minus 1 into v. This is the rate at which the fluid will get exp expelled, okay. This is the this, is, this will be the flow rate. So, what are we achieving by doing this? Similarly, if you look at the pressure, if you look at the pressure, then you will find that 
So you see that suppose the one 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 interesting thing that happens is that suppose suppose a is equal to 0.5 of a or rather a by a is equal to 2 right so then what happens is that you can you can see that the uh, for example with the same pump flow rate v the uh, distance traveled per unit time is going to be uh, if this is v this is going to be the 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 flow into this is going to be v and in the previous case what was happening in the previous case what was happening is that uh, if we go to the previous case how do we go to the previous case yep it came a little fast yeah in the previous case we were having uh, so you you can you can you can actually find out that we have we have, we have to do it again we, we you can actually find out that the 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 interesting point is that you can work it out in fact this can be a nice exercise that there are two things that will happen. The first thing is that you will you will find that number one, two points. Number one is that say let us say two is to one area ratio. Then you will find that the extension and retraction speeds are same. But they are not going to be same for other area ratios. That must be remembered. Similarly, you will find that so you see we can find that at a at a at a, at a smaller if we if we directly connect it to it to tank say in the case of the extension stroke if we directly connected to connected this to pump and that to tank then we would have had a slower motion with the same pump flow rate we would have got a slower motion which we are so the what, the advantage of regeneration is that with the same flow rate rating pump we are able to generate faster motion but at the same time, we'll see that we'll require higher pump pressure, right? So, so what happens is that I mean, basically, for for that is when we'll require higher pump pressure. If we want to drive a load which requires the same force to to be driven, then in the regenerative circuit, we need higher pressure. So, basically, we are trading off pressure with flow. That is, we are we can use a lower flow rate pump to achieve a certain speed, but at the same time, if you want to achieve a certain force, then we have to give higher pressure. So this is the basic feature of a, this regenerative retraction circuit. So moving on to the next one. This is a regenerative reciprocating circuit with with changeover to conventional mode. So what, what is happening here? Basically the same type. Only thing that is happening here is that uh, here you see initially we have uh, again pump. I'm sorry. What is this happening here? Again you have pump. Uh, you have leave valve you have three position direction valve with solenoids and hydraulic pilot and so in the first case in this position that is shown flow is like this like this to the cap end starts moving goes this way and this is wrong actually you should draw it like this. So comes freely and there is regeneration, right? So initially there is regeneration. So with the given pump flow rate, speed will be higher. Now if at the end there is a higher force encountered, which cannot be, uh, which cannot be supported by the prime mover at that flow rate, then what is going to happen? is that the pressure here will build up whenever this re faces resistance the pressure here builds up 
when the pressure here will build up and this is opposite. So, this is going to be connected like this. So, now you see that it will be after the after the pressure builds up it will connect like this and flow through this. So, now across this there will be a full pressure and there is no regeneration. So, therefore, the speed will fall and therefore, it will be it will still be able to handle the pressure right. Now, so, so at the end if, if, if there is a higher force requirement it will it will change over by this valve from a regenerative circuit to a conventional reciprocating circuit. What will happen in the in the other position in the, in the other position it is it, very simple in the other position it will be here. So, then what will happen is that the, this is this will be the flow. So, it will directly flow through this check valve straight and it will come back directly it will actually come back here and it will get connected to tank. So, 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 so that is a very conventional mode. So, in this case it will there is there is no pressure requirement and it will it will come back. So, on the only ad advantage is that since we are we have higher force requirement. So, as long as the force requirement is manageable by the pump we are going for a regenerative circuit having so with the pump flow rate we are achieving a higher speed, but whenever the force requirement goes up. So, we are immediately switching over to a it the I mean the system automatically switch switches over to a conventional circuit pressure is now full applied. So, we can manage and the flow rate falls uh, and, and, the, uh, and with the flow rate we have a lower speed. So, that is the advantage of this circuit. Next, we have a sequencing circuit. So, in the sequencing circuit what is happening is that here now in this example we, we have more than one cylinder. So, far what we have been doing is that we are uh, we have handled only one cylinder, but sometimes it happens that you need to operate multiple cylinders and uh, uh, for example, suppose you have a you have a you have a wood working machine right you have a you have a planing machine. So, before you plane the machine before you start moving the planing uh, cutter you have to hold the job. So, the sequence is that first operate the holding cylinder then start moving the planer. So, the planer extends then the planer retracts then remove the uh, clamp cylinder. So, you see that we are we have every time we operate we have to operate it in first clamp then extension of planing cylinder, then retraction of planing cylinder, then unclamp. So, this is a particular sequence of two cylinders which have which have to be operated. So, now we will see how we can achieve this one right. So, uh, here we are. So, here is the circuit. So, what are we going to do? Look at this circuit. So, we have Uh, we have here we have two cylinders one is j another is h right and we have we have normal pump this is the main valve okay which is being operated here is the relief valve d and these are the three valves which actually cause the sequencing right so, now what happens is that initially cylinder H extending right. So, it is in this position look at the position. Then what is the flow cylinder H extending means it flows through this check valve open direction flows into cap end goes out through this flows through and returns this is here is tank. So, this is the position and so the cylinder H is extending going up this is the first phase of the cycle. After some time what will happen is that cylinder H will 
stop it has to it it comes across a it comes across a mechanical stop now now what happens so the moment it comes to a mechanical stop here this pressure will now build up because there it, there cannot be any further flow through this flow is stopped so immediately this point rises to pump pressure that will operate this valve right cannot go through this cannot go through this at this point so it goes through this and starts pushing starts pushing valve j so flow goes like this like this like this so cylinder j extends right all through this remember that this pressure there is a pressure on this so there, so this pressure is holding this is pressed cylinder h is pressed up so there is a if you want if you are using it for clamping there is a clamping pressure next cylinder j retracting next what happens is now you have moved the solenoid so you have moved the solenoid and it is now actually this is wrong actually this should be this is wrong this should be connected to this point and this pump should be connected to this point so now the pump flow is connected like this goes through this goes through this cylinder j retracts flows out through this flow free flow check valve and goes through this goes through this to pump tank cylinder j retracts right next last point uh -uh. last point now cylinder j has retracted fully so now this pressure cannot so now the pressure here builds up so the pressure here builds up so the pressure here also builds up and this now pushes the cylinder down but this time no note that it has to pass through this so therefore while the cylinder h is coming down there is a there is always a back pressure this is not connected to tank because it's not passing through this it's passing through the relief valve so the cylinder h coming down is actually being here the net force is actually being controlled so it is coming down slowly you know sometimes when you have vertical coming down etc under weight you want that the coming going up is can be fast but going down has to be at a low force so this is what we have achieved by uh, so we have achieved the sequencing so these are some of the circuits and what we have seen in this lesson we have seen unloading circuits system pressure selection circuits various kinds of reciprocating circuits reciprocating circuits with rapid modes reciprocating circuits with regeneration reciprocating circuits with regeneration plus conventional and finally we have seen sequencing circuits which are basically recipro reciprocating circuits with multiple cylinders okay so that brings us to the end of the uh, lesson points to ponder many questions you can think of for example can you imagine what would happen if the check valve was not present in the first unloading circuit there will be problem how would you modify the system if you wanted to unload pump b instead of pump a in that first system that's very simple it that circuit is very symmetric so you will have to whatever you did for pump a you have to move for pump b why are lines connected to connecting c to d and d to e marked in dashed line this is the second one that is system pressure selection because they are pilot lines sorry i i have already given an answer you are supposed to think about it can you one thing i wanted to mention is that in many cases you will find that i have i have said that some limit switch operates and that operates some solenoid so how does that happen so you have to have a scheme for that sometimes you can have a purely electrical scheme sometimes you can have a simple you know sometimes you can have a simple relay type scheme or sometimes you can have a plc based scheme so various special arrangements are needed so for example i have given one can you briefly describe a scheme to automate the above system such that whenever in the intermediate pressure mode pressure setting is exceeded 
the system would automatically switch to the low pressure mode. Previously, it was being done manually as it is shown in there. So, you can devise a some control mechanism by which it will sense the pressure and it will switch on. How does the solenoid get energized if the limit switch is made? Same question. Is the speed of the cylinder going to be equal during extension and retraction when you have a regenerative circuit? If not, then what decides the speeds? We have analyzed this. It is the area ratio, but how does it decide? That you figure out. Explain all parts of the symbol of the directional valve C, basically same except for a very something special. This is about the regenerative reciprocating circuit, only the directional valve has a detention. That was the only special thing. This is we have discussed regarding the issues regarding pressure and flow. So, that brings us to the end of the lesson 28. Thank you very much.